guys, it's Marco Hanna from PhoneDog.com. In the past couple of videos, you guys have probably noticed me wearing my Google Glass. Now, I asked a bunch of you guys on Twitter if you'd like to see a Google Glass challenge, and surprisingly, every single one of you, or not every single one of you, a lot of you guys actually replied saying, yes, we want to see a Google Glass challenge, uh, and this is a really interesting topic. Now, this 30-day challenge will be a little bit different from what you're used to. Since it's not really a cell phone or a tablet, it's more of an attachment of your cell phone. It's basically worthless if you don't have a cell phone that's capable of communicating with Google Glass since it's a Bluetooth ready device. And that's basically how it works. It has to have a Bluetooth connection for it to really function the way it's meant to be. So I'll be doing the update videos throughout my 30 day challenge, kind of talking about how this works and how I use it as an everyday device. Now I'll also have a full video review of the Google Glass in a later video. But this is day one of a Google Glass challenge and this is kind of an introduction to Google Glass as a device. We'll talk about the hardware, the specs, how it works, and kind of basically an all arounder of the Google Glass and see if you would be interested in something this expensive but somewhat not as useful as you think. So this is Marco Hanna from PhoneDog.com. This is the Google Glass Challenge. Let's dive into it. Just a quick note before we begin here, this is Glass 2.0. It's not a big difference from the first generation Glass. There are some slight hardware upgrades though. Most of them are internal. So the unit itself is actually really simple. It all starts off with this titanium band that's going around the whole unit. This is basically the backbone of a Google Glass unit. It's really bendable, it's flexible, and it's really, really durable. Google Glass guides actually recommend you to flex these just so you can get a good feel on how strong these are and hopefully how how tough these will prove to be. If you look further to the right side, you'll see the plastic enclosing for the hardware and the battery. This basically runs a phone CPU and GPU, and the end bit is an internal non-removable battery. Hardware-wise, it has a 1.2GHz dual-core OMAP4430 from Texas Instruments and a PowerVR SGX540 GPU. Kind of last-generation technology, but it's good enough to run a very simple software. You also have 1GB of RAM and 16GB of built-in storage, but keep in mind that 125 is only available to the user and the rest is reserved for the software. The camera on the front is a 5 megapixel camera capable of taking 720p video and no greater. The skinnier part running along the side of a Google Glass unit is actually a touchpad. Now this is where you can interact with Google Glass with your finger. You can go up and down, left and right. This is one of the best inputs of Google Glass that doesn't involve you speaking to the Google Glass unit itself. Now the main part of a show is the glass piece itself. While it's actually not made out of glass, it's actually a really nice piece of refraction science. So inside you have a display that's projected onto a refracting line that actually refracts the image back into your eye. I really can't explain this and how this works. I'm not a science major, nor am I a ginormous nerd in terms of researching how this actually works in refraction, but it is a very cool technology. So the result of that is a 26 inch TV from about five feet away. It doesn't take up a ginormous amount of room in your line of vision. It's actually not even in your line of vision if you set it up properly. It's actually right above it. So when you do look at it, it's actually really tiny compared to everything else. It's not like, I don't know, Tony Stark or Iron Man where it takes your whole vision display. Now the resolution of this display is only 640 by 480. It's really kind of last generation, uh, but there's not many pixels on the display. And since it's so tiny, I really don't think pixels matter because I can't see individual pixels because they would be too small. And I'm actually not looking at a display itself. It's a refraction. You have to remember that. And one of the biggest surprises of Google Glass itself is actually how lightweight it is. It's a very lightweight pair of glasses, if you can call it really glasses because it's kind of like a cyborg type thing. It's very lightweight. It looks a lot heavier uh, in terms of images. I actually thought it would weigh more than it actually does, but it's a super lightweight product. So I've made this first video kind of short and simple, but this is the best way to show off Google Glass in a very simple and beautiful cinematic type way. Uh, and this will be the first episode of the 30 day challenge. It doesn't mean there'll be 30 episodes, but I'll try to make as many of them that have relevance to the Google Glass product and the experience and how I use it every day. But also I need your help. If you have a question about Google Glass and wanna see it on the next episode of a Google Glass challenge, make sure to tweet me at phone dog underscore Marco. All of your questions and I will respond either on Twitter or add it to the next episode of a Google Glass challenge. So make sure to leave your comments below or send me a tweet on Twitter. But thanks 
for watching. My name is Marco Hanna from PhoneDog.com. Again, follow me on Twitter at PhoneDog underscore Marco and keep it locked here at PhoneDog.com for more great content. So make sure to leave your comments below and send your request to at PhoneDog underscore Marco on Twitter. But thanks for watching. My name is Marco Hanna from PhoneDog.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.